What is good? We're back. Obviously, only one amigo here. Missing the tripod. Got the monopod. Boys are a little sick up. It's that time of year. A lot of a lot of sickos out there, but you know, the strong will survive, and the pod must go on. So here we are. Uh, we just did running back dynasty stashes. Um, and if you haven't checked that out, and this is the first video of that, basically what we did over there was this isn't, you know, hey, stash away Chris Olave, your first round rookie pick, uh, stash away these obvious guys who, what, what's the alternative? You gonna fucking cut them? No, of course not. These are guys who are, um, you know, potentially on your waiver wire. Some of them maybe fringe waiver wire guys that maybe had been on there at some point throughout the season. Um, so we're going to kind of go through and, and these, these guys are depth builders for when you're just taking grenades in the trenches mid-season can give you some spot starts not going to necessarily be quote unquote league winners we'll, we'll hit you with some cheap trade targets here coming up and some guys to buy uh before maybe their value goes up in the next coming videos maybe i think we're gonna have jb on again um, so we'll talk with him about some of that stuff. But right now, these guys are going to be depth pieces that could either because of a situational change where the guy in front of them moves on as a free agent or they're a free agent. Um, wide receiver could could maybe take on a bigger role and or in the offseason, catch a little value bump and you can use them as a piece in a trade or you're just getting some depth here or worst case scenario, you got them for free. You show them the you show them the door, you know, whenever you need to, to create a little bit of space here. But uh, at the end of the season, I'm sure there's a guy or two that that, that you could flip flop for for a couple of these guys. Um, so without any more of that, let's get rolling on Dynasty Stash wide receivers. Now, I want to lead this one off a little different than the running backs. You know, this year's wide receiver free agents as where the running back free agents, you know, going to be a, a big mix up and a lot of stuff moving around. Whereas the wide receiver movement, you know, your top free agents for this year are Lazard, Juju, Shark, Jacoby Myers, Paris Campbell, Miko. I'm sure I left a couple other guys out and maybe one of your favorite guys, but none of those guys are really, uh, you know, tightening up the pants per se. And, you know, if, if Rogers comes back, you know, does Lazard get re-signed just because he's in the tree of trust and, and is comfortable in there and they want to make Rogers happy for a year? Sure. Could Juju get re-signed o over in Kansas City? I don't see why not. Um, Chark is, has been a big one. Uh, kind of for me here, Myers is is good. Uh, Paris, you know, we hope. Me cold, maybe. Um, and then, you know, then some of the top billings of those guys are followed by some not so spring chickens of Randall Cobb, Julio Jones, Jarvis Landry, Marvin Jones, guys like that who aren't necessarily spring chickens anymore and aren't, you know, aren't moving the needle too much. You know, I like Landry. I'll, I'll put Landry on every team possible. And, you know, again, FFPC, I picked up a lot of Landry in the last couple of weeks and just threw him on the bottom of the roster. So there, boom, we'll, we'll lead it off uh, kind of right like that. Um, with, with the, again, with the running backs, you started with an FFPC style, which is a little bit more shallow, uh, bench only 20, 22 players. Um, and then, you know, so I think, I think, uh, I, we could throw even some guys on that list up there that were going to be the free agents this year who were a little bit more exciting just to show you how unexciting that DJ Chark was out there in some FFPC leagues. I scooped him up and, uh, two IRs and threw him on there and let him sit for a while. And now he's just chilling on the team. Paris Campbell was, was probably out there in a lot of FFPCs once or twice this year. Um, you know, me I'm sure is certainly out there. So all those guys, um, fine with the with the shorter bench and i and i love paris and, and chark is a is a huge kicker and trade guy traded traded uh, uh this year's fourth and, and next year's fourth two weeks ago for dj chark so just cheap uh end of the roster gonna get a change of scenery we know that guy can play we know he can fly he's been even good when he's healthy uh for the lions this last week you know he got a little bit of Got a little bit of sauce, uh, and 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 you know the the Jets defense is pretty decent, but I think you know Chark is could lead us off in a good way to kind of jump into that, and then some more FFP PC style guys for stashes here. Uh, Terrace Marshall DLF ADP one forty two. Some people would argue that they don't want anything to do with them. Hey, if, if I can throw him at the end of the bench for virtually free or a kicker in a trade, I'm fine with it. You know, to be transparent, I did like him a decent amount coming out. I do think he can kind of play inside and out. He's a bigger body. Um, Carolina's, you know, 
not necessarily the best place for opportunities. I mean, look what they're, you know, DJ Moore is, is struggling week to week, you know, he'll blow up and then nothing. So, you know, I don't know how great of a look we're getting right now at Terrace Marshall. So throw him on there. Corey Davis, he's out there in a lot of FFPCs, probably not out there in your regular teams. But again, we could, we could like, just like we were talking with Chark and Paris, those could be kicker guys in a trade where nobody's going to have that much value on them. And you can go ahead and, and pick Corey Davis up. Now is Corey Davis super sexy? Is he what we want him to be? No, not necessarily, but he's had times in this again, offense where, you know, it's, it's been up and down because they can't necessarily find a quarterback. You know, he's, he led the season off. I think with a 10 target game, he's had another 10 target game. And when you're, when you're down some receivers or even the jets receivers get a little banged up and Corey Davis is the healthy one. He can be a nice little spot start for you, you know, on a, so on a deeper roster, or if he's floating out there on the, like an FFPC on the waivers, pick him up. I'm fine with that. Throw him on there. See what happens. And what, what, what's the worst that happens after the draft, you throw him back in whatever, um, or in a deeper league, you're keeping him. And, and, and I do like a good spot start from Corey Davis. If you need him clear, uh, Shakir on, on the bills, probably not out there in a ton of things. You could maybe get him for cheap on a, on a kicker, Gabe Davis. I don't necessarily, we've been calling him fancy MVS. I don't think he's the guy. I don't know. Maybe Shakir isn't, but I like him a decent amount. Um, and if you can put him on the team and stash him away for later, he's at 160 DLF ADP. So, so still, you know, fairly cheap. Um, next guy got him on some FFPCs, Kyle Phillips, 198 DLF ADP came off first game of the season, you know, six for 66, then, you know, just kind of tapered off. And, and then now has been on the IR for a while. I, some people dropped him because maybe their IR got filled up in FFPC. I scooped him up. He's chilling on my IR. I want Kyle Phillips everywhere I can get him. Um, I think he, he, he can, he seems like he could develop in, into a fun, nice little uh, possession chain moving slot receiver for them. They badly need somebody else. Bobby trees is, is getting older. Traylon showing signs of life. Um, Chig looks great, but you know, we'll, we'll see where this offense kind of moves forward and, and see how, where they go kind of moving forward. But Kyle Phillips is definitely a guy Um who probably isn't on your deeper bench waiver wires, but is is certainly obtainable and is certainly uh, was out there in a decent amount of FFPCs. And when we're talking about FFPCs, um, you know, we're not, you know, I know people get on here and talk about leagues of people being available. These aren't the, the FFPCs that me and Big Co have and I have separately are all 250 or minimum. So it's not like they're just a bunch of schlubs playing for no money. And Kyle Phillips is out there. That's a you know $250 league where Kyle Phillips is was available in um, a few times. So let's we can shift gears to some some deeper stabs here for the back half of the wide receiver stashes. Um Rashid Shahid, he's at ADP 191. Um, he's shown some flashes here. Jarvis, you know, last week you just saw it. Um, there's there's been a few other splashes uh, for him. Uh, he's he's a rookie. He's he's uh, Jarvis Landry is only on a one year deal. He's out of there. Michael Thomas isn't playing a whole lot. Um, obviously as you can you can see maybe he'll be back when he was back he was great um but olave is really the only player on there uh juan johnson who's their tight end who is a converted wide receiver um or who was a wide receiver converted tight end he's a restricted free agent so you know i don't exactly know what's going to go on over there and the quarterback situation certainly isn't great um but you know why not scoop this guy up throw him on there he, he's shown some flashes shown some life throw him at the bottom of the roster um, Juwan Jennings, he's, uh, he came out of Tennessee, he plays for the Niners. He's got 80 DLF ADP of 237. Um, he does have an exclusive rights free agent after this year, but this guy, I'm a Niners fan to be transparent. Um, but he comes up in big spots constantly throughout the playoffs with these guys, big third downs. Um, he's a bigger bodied receiver. You know, if he's playing for Shanahan, he's down to block, he gets it. Um, so I think if this guy could ever get an opportunity to be a two in a different offense, um, I think he could really, really flourish and he's virtually free. Um, he, he's, he, like I said, gives you the size so he can be a red zone threat, but he's great at running all the intermediate and short stuff to, like I said, pick up the tough third and seven, third and five, third and 12. Um, he, he's just came up for big plays, uh, time after time for the Niners, um, in situations where you really needed something. Um, and, and he, he's, he comes through 
quite a bit and I've enjoyed watching him. Hopefully, selfishly, the Niners bring him back. But for your fantasy purposes, um, maybe maybe they don't. And uh, he ends up being able to spread his wings somewhere else. So go ahead and get you some Juwan Jennings. Throw him on the bottom of the roster. Uh, next guy up here, Isaiah Hodgins. Uh, he's at ADP 275 right now for DLF. Slayton is an un, un, unrestricted free agent next year, which you could add him to this list as well. Um, but he's probably picked up right now. So you could throw him on the kicker trade list there. Um, you know, sh- Sterling Shepard is old and hurt and is also a free agent. Kenny fucking Galladay, see ya. This guy can take the place of Kenny Galladay for a fraction of the cost. Um, and what's inter- a little interesting about Isaiah Hodgins here is, one, he's 6'3", 201, so he gives him that little bit of size that they might have been looking for with Kenny because the rest of the guys they got aren't necessarily real big, like you know the Wandells of the world, Slayton, not huge, Shepard, not huge. Um, I know Wandell and Shepard aren't playing, but you get kind of get kept, catch my drift there. Um, you know, the the Giants claimed Isaiah. If you're saying, well, who's this guy? Where did he come from? Isaiah Hodgins got claimed from the Buffalo Bills, who was drafted by them when Dayball was up there um, when he was the OC. Um, he was on the practice squad for the Bills. They finally caught him to make room for somebody else. The G-men came right in and scooped him up in the middle of the season. Um You know, week 10, he gets his first start. And then by week 12, you know, I'm not saying these numbers are super impressive. I'm just going to give them to you. You know, four targets, three receptions, 31 yards, six targets, five receptions, 44 yards and a touchdown, six for six targets, four receptions, 38 yards and a touchdown, four receptions or four targets, four receptions, 37 yards in the last outing. I mean, you know, is it? Awesome, crazy, great stuff from Hodgins necessarily. No, but this offense is an awesome, great, exciting stuff. And and he came right in, picked right up, knew what was going on, and he's getting usage week after week. Uh, he's signed there uh, for another year, I believe. Um, so this guy could be a nice little hold. Maybe they bring Slayton back, um, but could be a nice little hold over next year. And yeah, well, are the Giants going to bring in somebody else, draft somebody? Uh, I'm sure. Um, or make a trade for somebody even? I'm sure. Um, but Hodges is free um, and he's, you know, he's given them a little bit of juice to get through the back end of this season, building a little chemistry. I don't know if they'll bring Danny Dimes back or not, uh, but Hodgins at 275 virtually on pretty much every waiver wire the last couple of weeks. I've gone through and scooped him up a bunch, um, and I believe you should too. So Isaiah Hodgins coming in there uh, at, like I said, 6'3", 200. Uh, and, and late DLF ADP, barely on there. Uh, two more to wrap up the ADP here for stashes for uh, wide receivers. Uh, Greg Dortch, I know uh, nothing too exciting there. A little bit of a smaller guy, uh, kind of come in and has bounced around a little bit, but um, not super duper old. Um only 5'7", 175, nothing great. But for the Cardinals, when they've had guys missing times, which is a lot, and the Cardinals obviously have had their struggles this year, but he's had nine targets, seven receptions, 63 yards, four targets, four catches, 55 yards, 10 targets, nine catches, 80 yards. Um, and then, you know, he's like he's been nicked and banged up and then had a stretch of some not great games. They got some of their guys back and healthy. And then um, he came back for a game week 11, 10 catches, nine or 10 targets, nine receptions, 103 yards. Uh, Dorch can obviously uh, get free, get open. He's free, I'm sure, on just about any waiver wire that you got. Um, And why not scoop him up? Give you give yourself a little uh, little Greg Dorch in your life. Um, And last but not least, uh, we'll hit you with some Ashton Doolin. Uh, He's going to be a free agent for the Colts next year. and, you know, he, he's got some wheels uh, back in the day. He's, he had the really good college dominator coming out of a small school. Um, but, you know, the Colts offense has been has been trash. They they scooped him up, I think, for a one year deal coming into this year. Um, but, you know, he, I'm sure he's out there. He's out there in a lot of my deeper bench leagues um, and on on some uh, of my really deep bench teams. And, you know, could make a splash play. Like I said, there isn't a whole lot of strong free agent um, opportunities out there 
to to get wide receivers. So maybe somebody could see a project in him, scoop him up, and and he could work his way into a starting role. But again, free, you could cut him easily, disposable uh, by week three next year, or even you know after you do your rookie draft if you need some space. Sure, throw him back out there. But uh, last but not least, we'll, we'll throw ashton in there so hope you enjoyed it be sure to like subscribe comment below um five star review all that jazz uh we will be we got running backs and we got tight ends in the same vein and then obviously we'll be coming back with some rookie mocks we'll be coming back with uh some cheaper trade targets we got jb coming on like i said um pretty soon so be sure to tune into all that we very much appreciate you all and we'll catch you next time peace